This thing's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. Like, that is quite frankly unreasonable. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to Ollie Talks Airsoft. As promised, it's arrived. So, this actually arrived with me yesterday and I unboxed it yesterday. So it's not gonna be a proper unboxing video, as I said I kind of would do. Because what do you get from an unboxing? Like, we all know that TM stuff comes really well boxed. I can just confirm instructions in the lid. Other than that, you just get the usual bits that you get with any kind of TM. So you get, you get a little adjustment tool uh, for your front sight, which we'll go over in a bit. We get an adapter to go on your speed loader, although you don't need that. You get some quality 0.2 BBs and you get a, a barrel plug as well. Finally, as always, you get a little pack with your cleaning and unjamming rod. This one is massive and you also have their proprietary speed loading tube and rod. Other than that, it's all nicely presented, standard kind of TM stuff. We're not too bothered about that. Let's talk about the actual gun itself. So, I tend to be a little bit all over the place with these things, but I'm gonna try and break it down and do it in a sensible, logical order, and so it's nice and easy for everyone to follow. So, let's talk first off just about the externals and what we're kind of looking at here. So, we've got an alu barrel, and we do have a, like a threaded uh, muzzle adapter on the front of here with a bit of gnarling. Now, I don't know what threading it actually is. It probably confirms it in the manual. Um, but ultimately, I don't know of anything that would immediately fit on here, although possibly some of the like Ace Tech shotgun tracers and things like that. Or normally, if TM puts some proprietary threading on the front on the front of something, they'll be coming out with something in future which will probably go on here. So maybe keep an eye out for that. Moving back, we've got a, a really nice like brass beaded uh, front sight, and then we've got a. This is kind of like an anti-reflection strip. So you can see there's actually uh, some lines running down it. So when you line the sights up, it's literally these two wings at the back here get lined up with your front sight post. Now, there is no uh, windage adjustment on this, only elevation at the front. And you have to put the little tool that I showed you through that hole and then turn this. I kind of don't see the point, it's a shotgun. Um, right, onto the handguard. It feels cheap. Um, I was disappointed to be perfectly honest. I was hoping that they, even if they'd made it out of slightly thicker plastic, it would have been better. But it, it does feel hollow, it does feel cheap. Um, and it is very light, but we're gonna come on to that stuff in a minute. Um, you do have a, a metal front sling loop as well. So then, moving back, you actually have a, a slightly different receiver to the AKM and the AKX, and you do have some really quite nice engraving on there. So that's, um, that's on both sides. So again, I think that actually looks, um, I think it looks pretty good, to be honest. So moving back further, we hit about here. So you've got a, um, a little locking piece. This is actually for your, uh, for your stock to fold into and it locks in there. It does have a bit of wobble and a bit of movement. I mean, the entire thing has wobble and movement, but I think there is a good reason for this and we're gonna to come to that in a bit. So that's your locking piece. On the other side, uh, we have uh, the bolt. So sadly, it's not full travel. So well, none of us were expecting full travel, um, but at some point, hopefully in the future, some kits are gonna come out with maybe increase the travel on this. So you do have, it's, it's like a split uh, dust cover on the top here. So I'll take this off in a sec so you guys can have a look. But I think what they've done here is everything is kind of loose and it's all made of light aluminium. And I think the reason they've done this is, you know, the lighter you make the gun, the more you'll feel the recoil. And also the noise this thing makes, it is loud. Like it may not feel that good to hold, but from the other side, it is intimidating, let me tell you. Because um, my friend fired it in my direction yesterday and I was like, whoa, okay, that's, um, that's no joke. That's gonna keep people's heads down. Anyway, I digress. Um, so there's a couple of little features here. So if I uh, drop the hammer and 
put the bolt catch up, sorry, put the um, fire selector up, so this puts the gun in safe and locks the trigger. Also means that you only get partial travel on the bolt. Once the gun has been put into a semi, cocked, and then put back on safe, you can actually accidentally then rack an additional three rounds into your chamber. And it does not hold six in there. Obviously we've got three inner barrels, as you can see, hopefully. Um, we've got three inner barrels, three fixed hop-ups. Um, but obviously, you know, the guys in Japan are using duster gas and 144 and we're using green gas. So we'll, again, we'll go on to that in a sec. Um, <laughs> it's, it is a really exciting gun, despite the things that I'm not that keen on. Um, so yeah, once you've done that, it is then possible for you to accidentally uh, load a couple of extra rounds. I've also noticed that the springs that send the bolt back are pretty lackluster. So every so often the bolt may not go all the way home and may need just a little bit of kind of encouragement. It tends to be all right when you're actually shooting it, but it's one of those things that what you want to do is you want to get a few hundred rounds you know, at least like into the gun then you can go in, wipe off like any um, any excess material that's come off just from metal parts grinding and stuff. Take that off, give it a bit of a lube, and then like this whole not closing properly will probably be a lot less of an issue. But it's something I literally can't tackle right now because when you get a new gun, you've just got to run it for a little while so it breaks in. Okay, so moving back a little bit further, um, let's talk about the trigger. So pretty similar to your other TMs, this is like... It's like a two pound trigger pull that you get on this. Um, mushy, not particularly defined, but you can bring it to the wall, sort of. You can anticipate where the wall is. So if I do that, you can bring it to about here and then... So I can tell where the wall is, but I can't feel where the wall is. That's just sort of instinct that... And you will get used to it. If you pick up one of these, you'll get used to where the trigger is. Ultimately, it's a shotgun, it's semi-auto, you're gonna be like that anyway, you're gonna be blatted. Um, okay, on the other side, unlike all of the other uh, AK style platforms that TM have come out with, this one has actually got a side mount on it so you can mount some optics. So why they thought optics for a shotgun but not for like anything else, well I suppose the AKX has got rails on, but for the AKM, oh, it'd be cool if they'd given that like side mount option, but Anyway, you get it on the Sega, and I know that TM have already come out with their own side mount with some rails that hang over the top here, so you can attach like kind of whatever optics you're wanting to put on there. I'd recommend like a small RMR or an Aimpoint Acro, things like that, they're pretty cool. Um, okay, so moving back a little bit further, now we've got uh, the pistol grip, which is again, quite plasticky, it's nice and thin, but obviously you can change this out. I've seen people have changed this for like the Magpul and stuff like that. So you can do that if you want. I don't really have any problem with it other than it just feels a bit cheap, um, which is a shame because this gun is about 450 pounds. So it's not a cheap gun by any stretch. So it's a bit of a shame that some of the materials feel like that. And moving on to the stock, again, bit of a disappointment like not only does is the stock very plasticky and even if they made the plastic thicker it would feel better it'd be oh, i just wish that tm would switch over and start using some sort of polymer um and again you can see a seam line all the way down the top here so i don't know whether that's actually reminiscent of the real gun if it is then i probably shouldn't have said anything but it's something that immediately kind of strikes you um again like you can fold the stock in and when you need to release it, there is a button that you press on the back here, just there, and it will open up. But it's pretty good. I don't think, um, I don't think I'll be folding the stock much other than obviously just for transportation and things like that. But like even this back pad on here feels kind of cheap. Um, it's unusual to say that, and just bear with me one sec, because when we look at something like this AKX, let me tell you, like nothing wobbles on this, nothing about this gun feels cheap. The handguard feels thick, everything about it, you know, like this, even this plastic stock, it feels like solid, you know, I, I'd be, it's not hollow. Um, when it comes to this, yeah, everything feels kind of hollow. And what that leads to is when you pick it up, it's light, like a lot lighter than you're expecting it to be. Not only that, 
The mags are light as well, and that was a real surprise for me. These come in at 404 grams. So like 400 grams, a normal AK mag is about 500 to 550. I think I measured the AKX one the other day, it was like 550 something. So you are actually getting, despite it being a really bulky mag, it does hold more BBs than the regular AK mags do. Um, and it's also quite a bit lighter. So this is kind of looking viable. So the reason that I think that they've made all these weight saving reductions is just to maximize the amount of recoil that you get from this gun. Now, bear in mind, this is the world's first gas blowback shotgun that's usable. Uh, so I'm not counting the Maruzen M110, the shell ejecting gas blowback shotgun, because yeah, it was out, you know, 15 years ago or something like that, but it's just not practical. Um, this has really taken a shotgun to the maximum practicality stage. So having mag fed, you know, three shots per trigger pull, 15 shots that you get out of the mag with three shots, yeah, brilliant. Like you will struggle to get more rounds downrange than you will with one of these. So now we've talked about the construction, which ultimately I'm not like crazy on, and sorry, there was a sling point at the back here if you care. Um, not crazy on the construction. However, um, when you put it together, not really any wobble in it. It, it, it does feel solid. Um, the most wobbly part is the dust cover that sits on top. So, in order to take the dust cover off, this one's actually got a button and then you would push it in. So we'll push the button and push it in. And you get a, this is, doesn't even feel as nice as the AKM uh, dust cover. That was like a steel one. This is, is lighter, again, leading to that, you know, the lighter the gun, the more the same amount of recoil force will kind of hit you. So let's have a look at this really interesting system that they've, going on, that they've got going on here. So we've got a spring here and then we've got another recoil spring at the back. And actually you've got this separate plate on top that you'll see kind of moves like halfway. So I'll take this out in a second so you guys can have a proper look and have a proper look at the nozzle and the way that this, this thing loads and then we'll kind of move on to the mag. So in order to take this out, basically the same as any other AK, whip this out. So as you can see, you've basically on here, there's a, this part in the middle is what this bit hangs onto. So it kind of, it's attached to the spring so it can kind of move independently. That means that it contacts uh, the bolt here and the dust cover loads and it makes it really noisy and intimidating, which is great. Um, so when we take this thing out, now, look at the size of that nozzle. Like, that is absolutely massive. And you can see the spring in there. And you'll notice a couple of other things which are really distinct about this. Like, where's the follower? There is no follower on here. Because actually, this never goes, like, in front. So if I get the mag here, that's the, um, that's the gas outlet. And I get the gas outlet on, on here and put them together, you'll see the nozzle never actually loads the BBs. So that was really interesting. I was wondering how they'd done this. So essentially, you've got this absolutely insane, like not an insanely big nozzle, but an insanely big outlet on the nozzle. Like this thing is chunky. Um, really cool. Hopefully, you know, it's nice and thick. It's got an O-ring on it as well. So like it, it should be reliable. It should be able to withstand a bit of damage. I've been running mine on green gas the whole time. I don't care. Um, no malfunctions. It's fine so far. Um, so let's see what it actually does when it splits those BBs. I may have to zoom in a bit, but hopefully you can see that. There's like, it splits them into three to divert them into the barrels. And the way that happens is with this mag, so it's really interesting that actually it pushes the BBs like off to this side. So if I just push the follower so it, it locks in, it's almost like, um, like an AEG mag. So if I was to load this up with BBs and pull back on this bit here, all the BBs shoot out. I've done it. So that's how it's doing it. So as soon as you lock this into the magazine, it's basically pulling this back, releasing the BBs to go up and also to the side. I'm not entirely sure how they're kind of doing this, but it works. You know, if you if you double rack the gun, uh, it will just drop three BB, 
three BBs out, it doesn't hold six in the chamber, unless you tip the gun back and do it, and then it will, but I mean, you shouldn't be doing that. Um, and you might, cause, you might cause a breakage or something. So also, um, one of the big features of this mag is, oh, it's got a, um, it's got a thermometer built into it, like, no one cares about that. Um, all you care about is, like, do you need to take it apart all the time? The answer is no. Um, there is a hole in the bottom where you can uh, fill the gas and you can literally use a standard speed loader and go straight in the top. It's nice and simple. The way this has actually been designed, so you've got your gas reservoir on this side and you've got your BB reservoir on this side and my goodness, that looks complicated. So I'm not even gonna be thinking about taking this apart. Uh, for a little while to be honest and I did notice at the bottom here it's sort of off it's not flat but it means that the bottom of this is flat because they've made this kind of off so ultimately you shouldn't really ever need to take them out and they don't just automatically want to fall out or anything like that so pretty good and they're a really tight fit in the gun and the reason for that I think is because obviously it's got to get those BBs feeding up and it has to be quite tight in there to get that done. So if I just uh, put this mag into the empty gun, you can kind of see there like how it all sits. Now, again, I had a quick look at the, uh, at the trigger box and everything in here. It is similar to the other TMAKs, but it's not the same. I was kind of thinking it would be cool if you could just take a full auto trigger box and just drop it in here and then just have a, within a day, have a full auto Sega 12K. It's not to be, but you know what? I'm not actually grumbling about that just yet. Um, I still think there's a lot of uh, a lot of legs for this gun. So let's just quickly weigh the bolt so we can see like the weight of the moving parts in here. So the bolt weighs not 27 grams. It weighs 315 grams. So that's um. That's actually not a bad weight, uh, to be honest, for, for fixed weight moving back and forward. Obviously, we, you know, we've managed to get higher moving mass out of like the MWS and things like that. So potentially um, recoil is still gonna be higher in some of the other platforms, which did disappoint me. Um, but I know that there is this uh, piston on the end here, and this is made of very light aluminium. I'm just not entirely sure how it comes off. It may be something to do with uh, a screw down here. But until it's kind of broken, I'm not going to start digging into it. I will let a company like Hephaestus come out with a steel uh, rod for it to increase the recoil. And I'll let them do the extra digging into the gun. So in order to put everything back together, it's all pretty simple. Uh, the rod goes in there. And slide all this forward. And this is the one time that I'll get it all wrong, I'm sure. Uh, there we go. So down and in. And, and you've just got to make sure that, that dust cover is kind of sitting like on the outside part and then obviously at the back here you may, you may not have noticed but there is actually an extra little recoil spring that's just held in there so obviously the speed that the bolt can cycle is quite an important feature of this uh, of this gun so here you go this is what the system looks like with the uh, with the dust cover removed and what I will do is I will get the mag and it's currently on, uh, th this is your dry fire part just at the bottom here. If I flick it to the back, um, it will allow me to dry fire the gun. So you can literally see there is a bar that kind of moves at the back there. So that means that it will stop shooting and that means that I can do a bit of dry fire. So um, mags are super tight, lock in like any standard AK and you'll, you'll notice the click, which is basically this part clicking backwards and being affirmative. So let's, uh, yep, that is loud. Yeah, meaty. So that's really loud, but when you put this sort of like loose dust cover on, which is really easy to put on, now you see how that changes the sound. So that's one of the reasons that I think they've gone with everything being so hollow and so light, just so they can make this thing like obnoxiously, obnoxiously loud. Um, if I just pull up my sound meter and we'll just see roughly what it says. Yesterday it was saying like 97 decibels. Uh, 
Uh, we've got a maximum of, uh, if you can see there, 105 decibels. Um, let me just reset. We'll do that again, just to make sure. And that gave me 100 decibels. Th this thing is no joke. This is almost like worthy of wearing some hearing protection when you're actually using it. Something else that people may have wondered about is like the cycle, like the cycling speed of the bolt. Like, can you rapid fire this thing? Like, can you, can you run the trigger? Um, to which I would say the trigger is not as nice. It's, it's similar to the AKM and the AKX, but not quite as nice. At the moment, if I try and shoot fast, I'm getting hung up on this more than I would one of the other platforms. However, that kind of gives you an idea, like you can run it quick. So next thing we should do is, um, everyone seems to not understand about how to chrono um, shotguns, um, because this is a gas blowback shotgun. Uh, it means that in order to chrono it correctly, you will need to have three BBs in it. Um, if you put one in, then it's not actually distributing the gas correctly and you will not get a true reading of what the FPS of your gun is. So, if I grab my speed loader, wherever it is, uh, or in fact, I'll tell you what, XL.2s, literally gonna grab three and stuff them into the mag. So, one, two, three. Uh, grab some. Oh, there's my speed loader with no BBs in. Um. <sighs> Don't worry, the gun's made tough, they're not gonna break. Um, so, right, there's three rounds in there. I will grab my, grab this thing. Right. So, let's, um, And there you go, an actual reading for you uh, sort of 298 FPS. Uh, the reason is, don't forget, all th like a chronograph has um, like two laser sensors and it, it detects breaks uh, in those lasers. So all three BBs, like they're not spread out by the time they're leaving the barrel, they're in line with one another. And so you can get a correct reading. I could do another one. I did a reading yesterday uh, when I'd not done quite as much shooting with the mag and it gave me 335 FPS on point twos, and this is using green gas as well so no mucking about like just going full force and I think you probably saw that I'm using the um, ASG Ultra Air gas so yeah let's just give it one more again 290 FPS so yeah, when you do see the other people reviewing it and saying, oh, it shoots 150 FPS, just don't listen to me, I don't know what they're talking about, um, even if it is shops. So, there we go. This is my first impressions. I shouldn't have put it down. I can barely put it down at all. This gun is seriously, seriously fun. Um, <laughs> is it overpowered? Maybe a little bit. Um, the fact that you can absolutely spam the trigger and get th with each shot three rounds down range is really impressive. Also, because uh, I mentioned this earlier, I said I would come back to it, I'm glad I remembered. Um, because uh, we're using green gas and, uh, instead of the usual duster gas, I have got a steady flight on BB shooting 0.28s. So I've not actually tested any higher. I'm gonna wait until I go out and actually skirmish it at the weekend. And I'll do some more testing on like before the game and just see what like the different BB weights are doing. But you know, from a brief bit of testing, shooting out to like 30 meters with 0.28s, they are just absolutely like not not straight. I mean, there you get some spread on it, but it's doing exactly what you would want a shotgun to be doing. To be honest, I'm only going to be using this for CQB, so I think the most I'm ever going to put in here is like 0.25s, and with 0.25s, you're going to get a, like a little bit of lift on it. So you're going to be maximizing your range. I think today it's about 20 something degrees, you know, oh, after like absolutely slating the mag for having a useless, well, that says 15 degrees, but that's the temperature of the mag. I can say for certain 
is not 15 degrees in this room. It is a good 20 or so. Um, but yeah, so first impressions, um, disappointed with the construction, but I kind of understand why they've done it. Um, obviously you've got to make something really light in order for it to have the most recoil and to just to be functional and to work. Like, yeah, I would have preferred polymer parts on it. As far as the functionality goes, I'm, I'm pretty sold on this. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing different things coming through, you know, in the future, maybe like a SPAS 15 or something like that. You know, there are plenty of other mag fed shotguns. You know, you could, we could have the Genesis or something uh, coming down the line at some point. But what can't be ignored is the fact that this gun here, this Airsoft replica represents a, a real turning point and a real like milestone in innovation. Having gas blowback shotguns is something that has been missing for a very long time. You know, VFC have kind of got the gas blowback submachine, sorry, gas blowback light machine gun area kind of covered. It's great to see TM coming in with a shotgun option, which is still going to be viable at, you know, like short to medium ranges. When I say medium range, I'm talking like 30, 35 meters. Like that for me is kind of medium range. Um, it's still going to be effective. From what I've seen, I'm really impressed. Uh, it is loud, it is obnoxious. Everyone is going to know when you pull the trigger on this thing. And oh, I don't know, yeah. I like it, I don't regret getting it, um, but I think probably future iterations of gas blowback shotguns are going to be a bit more refined. Um, but do I regret my do I regret my purchase? Hell no. Um, this thing is so freaking cool. Yeah, I'm all about that. I'm like, that's me all day. Um, I'm really happy with it. Um, hopefully this has sort of showed you guys something about the gun that other people kind of haven't been showing quite as much. Obviously if you've got questions about it, then pop them in the comments below. I will answer what I can, but at the moment I'm still kind of, I'm learning the platform myself. I just wanted to bring it to you, show it to you. But you know, today is Thursday. Um, by the end of uh, by the end of the weekend, I should be going to a skirmish on Sunday, so I will have had some real time behind the trigger on this, and I'll probably bring you a skirmish update at some point next week to let you guys know how it's performed, if I had any issues out in the field, and fingers crossed, I will have my second mag uh, by then because I've managed to find one online, one per customer is all they're offering at the moment. So hopefully that's going to arrive in the next couple of days, and I'll at least be able to do a mag change on this as well because. The mag changes, as you've probably seen from everyone else's videos, like the, the mag is, is, is tight in the mag well, um, but I mean, you, yeah, you can do it. It just takes a bit of practice. Um, it's not quite as simple as the other AKs uh, to get the mag in, but you'll learn. Like it's too cool not to want to spend some time learning. So <laughs> there you go, guys. Thank you so much for spending your time with me and looking at this Sega 12K. I can't wait to bring you some more stuff on there and the AKX and all the other stuff that's been going on as well. If you haven't subscribed, think about doing it. It really helps me out. And yeah, I will see you guys on the next one. Take care.